Hey everyone, I'm Brian Parks, and in this video, I want to talk about how to run containers on your system without using Docker. Uh, now, lots of people have talked about uh, Docker and why it's maybe a security issue, or they just don't like it, or you know, lots of different things. Um, but in this video, we're going to talk about Podman, uh, which is an alternative to Docker when it comes to running on your local machine, on a development machine. There are lots of reasons why Podman is awesome. Uh, there are plenty of talks out there. Uh, I'll link at least one of them down in the description below if you want to check that out. Uh, that's actually what got me into Podman. Um, but one interesting thing is that the history of containers actually starts a long time before uh, Docker, and Docker actually built on some of those other technologies. Uh, Podman also built on those technologies. Uh, so both Docker and Podman are basically compatible with the same sort of containers. Uh, they're now called OCI containers. Uh, they're Open Container Initiative, uh, containers and images. Uh, so one of the nice things about Podman is that if you wanted to, you could actually alias the term Docker in your shell to Podman and most, the vast majority of the commands would actually work exactly the same. Uh, and that, that's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't do that. I'm going to be running Podman from the command line uh, as the Podman command just for demonstration. But if you're used to typing Docker all the time and you want to alias Docker to Podman, go for it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab a copy of Podman. Um, let me make sure I'm showing the screen. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so the first thing you're, you're going to want to do is to grab a copy of Podman. Um, and uh, to do that, you go to podman.io uh, and then you can, I think I clicked a download link to get to this, uh, maybe this get started link. Um, I'm running on Windows, so I'm going to show. Um, there are actually a different, a couple different ways you can use it on Windows. Either you can connect to uh, Podman running on Linux on another machine or in a VM. I'm going to show how to use it with Windows Subsystem for Linux 2. And it does has, have to be WSL 2. Uh, the way the kernel works in WSL 2 is different from the way it works in the first version of WSL. Uh, and WSL 1 very much does not work with either Docker or Podman. Um, I tried both uh, while I was prepping for this video. Neither of them worked, so don't even try it. You do need to make sure that you're using WSL 2. And the way you can do that is, here, let me bump uh, this font up a little bit. You run WSL dash dash list dash dash verbose. Uh, WSL dash dash list just shows you the uh, WSL distributions that you're running, but if you add dash dash verbose, it will show you the version. So you can see I have uh, Ubuntu 18.04 running in WSL 1 and Ubuntu 20.04 uh, running in WSL 2. Uh, I actually had uh, the, that second one running in WSL 1 earlier, tried both Podman and Docker, neither worked. Uh, so I upgraded them to version 2, uh, which you can do by uh, dash dash set dash version. And then you say uh, the distri distribution name. So you went to, you went to 20.04 and then 2. Uh, to, to set it to uh, version 2. And if you forget how to do it, you can also do WSL dash dash help, and that'll show you how to do it, set version, distro version. So this is what I did there. And now, over here in my uh, WSL uh, distribution, uh, we have everything running. We have a, a command prompt, and you can see that uh, I have Podman running. Now, in order to get here, I did start with uh, some instructions that are linked from the Get Started page. Um, but I stopped about here. So this, all of this is good stuff. All of these commands you need to run. It, it uh, connects your Ubuntu system to the, the Podman PPA. Uh, updates apt and installs Podman. 
uh, and then specifies some uh, some uh, default repository, so Docker.io and Quay.io, uh, kind of the the two most popular places to get uh, what most people would call Docker images, but realistically OCI images. However, all of this uh, impl in information afterward uh, is actually old, even though this article is just from uh, January 30th, 2020, which is a little bit under a year ago. Um, most of this has actually changed. Uh, they've done a lot of work to make it, uh, in theory, a little bit easier on Windows Subsystem for Linux, and, and uh, it looks like they're trying to make things be essentially the same across all platforms. So let me show you what I had to do to get it working on Windows Subsystem for Linux. So first, uh, I had to create a directory in my home directory uh, called .config, and inside that directory, create another one called containers. So we have .config slash containers, and inside that directory, um, this is the important one, uh, containers.conf. Uh, libpod, without the underscore, was an older version of that, of that file. So if you see references to uh, libpod.conf, um, that's an older version. You'll actually get warnings saying that uh, that's a deprecated name and to use containers.conf. So I've renamed it to underscore libpod just so Podman doesn't look at it. And now I'm using containers.conf. So if I open that up, you'll see I've added a couple lines. Uh, it, it, it appears to be uh, in the INI file format. So you need this engine in square brackets um, kind of label. And then I've changed cgroup underscore manager to cgroup, cgroup fs and events underscore logger to file. This is because in Windows Subsystem for Linux, there's no systemd, uh, which is kind of a, a, a daemon orchestrator uh, that is, is pretty common in the Linux world these days. Uh, and it, it basically tells Podman here to use something other than that. So events get logged to a file. And I'm not entirely sure what the cgroup manager thing is, uh, but it's it, it's one of those things where if you don't set this, Podman will not run. Um, so yeah, make sure you set those two things. I just pulled this up in VI, but if you're more comfortable with Nano or Emacs, go ahead and use your text editor of choice. Uh, and with that, you can see I can run things like Podman info and get some information. Uh, and let's actually use Podman. So uh, first, let's let's do podman ps dash dash all again, just like Docker. So, what would you check to see what's running or what's available or what you know what what uh, containers you've run on your system with Docker? You do Docker ps dash dash all. So podman ps dash dash all shows me that I have no containers running or uh, even that I've used. I actually went through and deleted everything that I did before just to clean up this. Uh, this this script. So let's uh, let's run a hello world. So I'm gonna find this command that I ran before. I'm gonna do podman run hello world. And of course, there we go. It's running. Uh, it's it's uh, pulled the image. I actually pulled it a while back, um, and it's showing. It does say hello from Docker, but I'm pretty sure that's hard coded into. The hello world image. This gets pulled from uh, Docker.io, the Docker Hub. Uh, so you see Docker all over the place. But you see references to, um, you know, kind of everything that happened. So yes, re mentally replace everything that says Docker here with Podman. Except, of course, in this first one, the Docker client contacted the Docker daemon. Podman is actually completely demonless. So it ran this. Uh, it ran this really quickly. Uh, in a in its own process. So let's actually uh, do something a little bit different and do this example command here: docker run dash it uh, ubuntu bash. Except of course, instead of using Docker, we're going to do Podman. So Podman run dash it ubuntu bash. So 
Again, I also have the Ubuntu image locally, so it doesn't have to pull anything down, but it spins up a new container with that Ubuntu image and gives me a root uh, prompt. So while that uh, while that process is still running, let's go ahead and uh, uh, see what's going on there. So we do ps-ef. We'll actually see everything that's running in WSL. Uh, obviously, a lot less than a um, than a Linux machine. But notice that nothing related to Podman is running as root. Everything is running as my user, bparks. Podman run IT Ubuntu bash, same thing here. Uh, this is some other stuff related to Podman. Um, with Docker, you would have the Docker daemon that's running as usually root or some privileged user. And then you'd have the, the Docker client, the, the CLI uh, program that runs as your own user, and they talk through the, the Docker socket, which needs to be uh, exposed to anyone who, who needs to use Docker. So it's basically a way for your unprivileged user to talk directly to the Docker daemon. Um, and, the, and that's kind of the root of everybody who says that Docker is insecure. That's the root of their complaints. Uh, that that whole relationship. Podman is completely demonless. Podman clearly is running this this um, this container as my user. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this also means that I don't need sudo. I didn't need sudo uh, to. Well, I guess I need, did need sudo to install Podman originally, um, just so it's available on the entire system. But after that, I don't need to add my user to any groups. I don't need to do any of that. I can just run Podman directly, and uh, I can be a completely unprivileged user and still run Podman completely successfully, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, that's I, I, I like that. That even with the the other security things, you know, there are some people who really care about that. Um, there are definitely ways to defend against that. But for me, the ability to run everything related to the container as my user just feels a lot cleaner, it feels a lot lighter weight. Um, and uh, if we actually pull up, you know, let's just for fun, let's pull up Task Manager and look at performance. So you will see that there's some CPU usage um, and some GPU usage just because I'm currently recording this um, and I also have a bunch of other programs open um, but you'll notice that it, there really isn't a whole lot of CPU usage going on. And realistically, I'm just running a shell. But it's still super lightweight, even lighter weight than if, if I were running this in Docker. Um, there's a lot less going on. I, I, I think that's pretty cool. So with that, uh, let's do Control D, and now let's do Podman uh, PS dash dash all again. And of course, it'll show... Um, the Hello World and the Ubuntu, uh, the two uh, containers that I was running. And that's basically it. Uh, the one other thing that I want to add is that uh, I'm running Windows 10 Home. Uh, Windows 10 Home cannot install Hyper-V, which until recently was required to run Docker on your machine. However, Windows 10 Home can run Windows Subsystem for Linux. And I have been running Windows Subsystem for Linux basically since I got this machine. Um, Podman, I can install that in Windows Subsystem for Linux and run containers on Windows Subsystem for Linux right there. It's super lightweight. Um, and I don't have the whole Docker infrastructure that I need, I need to download if I wanted to run Docker for Windows. Now, Docker for Windows does uh, you, it, it can use Windows Subsystem for Linux 2 now. I haven't tried that on my machine. Maybe I'll do that in a future video. Um, but one of the things that I do like about Podman is that it's so lightweight and you know it doesn't blow up my system. I didn't have to install a whole big application. Um, and even if I wanted to blow away this WSL2 uh, distribution here and refresh it from, from scratch, all I need to do is, is install Podman again, and I'd be up and running. Obviously, I'd have to create all my containers, but that, that's not an issue. It, it just feels a whole lot cleaner to me. So with that, I hope that gave you a good look at uh, how 
uh, Podman can work in WSL2. Now you can run containers on Windows, well, anywhere, but I, I showed on Windows, um, without using Docker at all. Podman's pretty cool. Uh, there are definitely other things in uh, kind of the non-Docker ecosystem that work with OCI containers and images. Um, and the, the, the video that I'll link in the description that got me into Podman actually talks about some of those things. It's from a couple of years back, so those projects were in the early stages, uh, but now they are definitely more mature and they're being used all over the place. Uh, you may have seen the news that uh, Kubernetes, uh, well, it was sensationalized as Kubernetes is dropping Docker. Um, that's kind of overblown and go check out those videos. Uh, there's some, there, there's real stuff going on over there. Uh, Kubernetes is moving to some of these other execution environments, um, which is cool because again, they're a lot cleaner. They don't have that, that uh, privileged socket issue uh, that, that some people are, uh, are, are definitely concerned about. Um, and that's because some of these, these projects that uh, were also being worked on with Podman are, are significantly more mature. So hopefully that gave you a, a good idea of how you can run containers without using Docker and also how you can run Podman in WSL2. Uh, I'll probably be doing more with this and uh, you know maybe I'll give you an update on, on how my journey is going with Podman in a future video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.